to the next part of the LS swap. So I drilled the holes for the LS pattern and I hole sawed out the center and the plate fits on there. The holes for the Subaru pattern weren't right. So that really sucks. Probably gonna have to JB weld these holes back up and try again. And I don't have any other drawing to go off of because that was the only drawing I could find. So I wanted to put the plate on the engine. You see how we have the engine sitting on the front. And I want to put the plate on it, put the transmission on it now that we got the hole. So I went to go put the pilot bearing in it. And I couldn't because of this piece, which is something to do with the automatic transmission in the Impala this came out of. So I don't have the proper tools to do this. I don't know if you could tell, but I figured out that this fits inside there. Kind of nice. This is just one of the draws off of my pulley puller. And this bolt, this bolt's a champ. <laughs> I wrapped the ratchet strap around it as many times as I could. Floor jack, you know, floor jack was kind of almost falling, so we strapped it to the ceiling as well. I tried with this thing first, it's not good enough. The floor jack, it, this was a big bang when it came out and I thought everything broke, but what, it, we want, what, what happened is what we wanted to happen, thankfully. So now I have to put the pilot bearing in. It's too bad that I didn't catch that on tape. It cut that whole weird setup working, but uh, I really didn't think it was going to work. So we recorded like the first little bit and then stopped because I really didn't think it was going to work. You can see I just punched the pilot bearing in in place of that weird bushing, and I already have the bushing or the reducer in here to accept the Subaru. Um, pilot shaft. So I'm going to just put the plate back on. It does fit a little tight, but I think it's okay. And like I said, the drawing I found online for the Subaru transmission was wrong or I did something wrong, but I triple checked it after I realized it didn't fit and I, and I did something or I did it right. It's weird when I, so I drilled this hole first, then I drilled this hole and tried it on the back of the engine block in the last episode and it fit. But then I went to go put it on the transmission and the pilot shaft was nowhere close to the center of the circle. So then I double checked what I did and I realized that this hole is actually supposed to be up here. So I put it up here. I didn't get it quite perfect but I put this dowel in, or then it wouldn't fit. The transmission wouldn't fit on here. So I put this dowel in and then didn't put this one in and the hole's off by a millimeter. But it didn't even matter because the, the input shaft wasn't centered in this hole. Then I tried it the other way around. I put the dowel in this hole, not this one. Put it on, it still wasn't right in the center. So that drawing is just completely a complete lie, or I don't know what I'm doing, one of the two. Okay, so that's on there nice and flat. And this, I had a hole saw just big enough to clear this. So now I'm going to put the Subaru transmission on here, line it up, and see what I can do. So, hopefully this goes in there nice. Hmm, it's not in there very deep. But maybe it is in there deep enough, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see that it only went in. I don't know, I think it might have went in enough, I'm not sure. You guys, you guys let me know if that's enough. It's probably two, two millimeters. 
I'd be happier if it was more, but I already hammered that stupid bearing in. Maybe if I took it out, bought a new one, and put some sort of spacer behind it. I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, so I got it lined up at the top, the center line of the pattern, with the case halves, the line down the middle. So you can see this is the first hole I drilled. It's nowhere close. I'll try and get it to focus for you. Well, it is close, but not nearly close enough to be usable. This one. That one I think I could get a dowel in, which is surprising. So I'll try and get a dowel in him, and if he's good, then I guess we fill this one up with JB Weld and try again. Alright, so I, I put the transmission in gear, so I can actually spin that. And it spins pretty freely. Before I put it in, I gave the input shaft a wiggle. Um, and it's pretty, pretty rigid in this. It doesn't move, so I think with it lined up and that dowel over there, I'm going to put this dowel in. I think that's good enough. Alright, I actually had to go look back at the last clip. But you can see when I spin this, the bearing's not moving. So, that leads me to believe that that's perfectly aligned right now because there's no load on the bearing whatsoever but if I put this dowel in the transmission moves a little bit to my left your right now when I spin it make sure you're focused it's going to be really hard to tell on camera, but yeah, you can tell. See? The bearing's now moving. So it moved this way when I put the dowel in, therefore misaligning it slightly so now the inner race of the bearing actually moves. So neither of the holes, well that hole is really damn close, but it's not close enough in relation to the other bolt pattern. So I'm going to fill both those holes in with JB Weld and give it another shot. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to buy another plate. So I'm not particularly surprised by this, that I screwed it up, but we'll give it another shot. But it is pretty cool to see it coming together like this. Alright, so it's been a day since I last recorded. But you can see I've filled in these holes and sanded them nice and smooth with JB Weld. I hope this is good enough. I'm just kind of a last ditch effort to save this plate. So I don't want to buy a new one. Earlier. We put the plate on here and the transmission and we stuck it in in here into this bushing that I put inside the pilot bearing. And I actually, since last time, I drew a line on there so you can see how much it actually engages, which I'm not super happy with. So what I'm going to do is I took this other bushing. I, it came in a pack of five, so it's the same bushing that's in there. It's not as thick as the bearing. And what I'm going to do, so the current bushing is sitting about like this. So I'm going to come in and it's going to bottom out on that bushing and I'm going to push it down to there. So half this bushing is going to be engaged in the bearing. The other one is going to be stuck out however far in the in the back but it it's going to stick out less than this one will because it's not as thick as the bearing and it's flush with the top currently so i'm going to actually put a little tiny bit of jb weld on this and then tap it in 
and hopefully it'll keep this one inside the, the bearing and it'll keep the other one from falling out the back which shouldn't be a huge issue because these are these were I had to press them in with the vise into that bearing so they're already a pretty tight fit but I'm gonna get that set up and then I'll start the recording again all right so sorry for the less than idea ideal camera angle but the best I can do right now so there's a already an uncomfortable amount of JB weld in this build but you know if it's not half JB weld and zip ties and where's the fun happy with that. A little bit of squeeze out in the middle, but that's not surprising. I'll have to clean that up. Clean up the edges a little bit too, and then we'll get the transmission back up here and see how everything lines up. Alright, so I got the adapter plate back on, the transmission back on, and I got it lined up perfectly again. So it's hard, it's hard for you guys to see just because it's a phone camera, but the shaft's moving and the bearing's not. It took me a little bit longer this time to get it in the right spot. So what I forgot to do, what I should have done first, is there's a dowel right here. You can't really see it. But there's also a piece of webbing right above it. So I'm going to angle grind out this webbing here so that I can just get my holes nice and accurate from this position it's in right now. So I've got it. I've cut out these two notches here, one on each side, so that I can get I can drill down there better. I double checked to see if it was. I don't know if you can see. Probably not. Oh, no, you can't. But it's not moving the bearing. Pilot shaft, or the input shaft, is in the pilot bearing. I have it clamped down in two spots onto the plate. So I'm gonna just get these holes started and uh, I am drilling partially into JB weld, so wish me luck. transmission off. It looks like it's erring towards the JB weld. Is 
isn't ideal, but I don't think there's anything I can do about that right now. It's pretty damn close. I'm going to just double check that nothing moved. It's pretty easy to check. Just make sure that that bearing doesn't move. Same thing here, which is almost it's pretty much fully into JB Weld. completely into JV weld. I don't know if I should keep drilling these holes like this or not because I do have a guide, you know, keeping it straight. Or if I should move over to the drill press. And it's everybody's favorite time. More JV weld. So I uh, tried drilling these holes on the drill press. I had the camera set up, but I forgot to hit record. But since there's uh, part of the hole is JB Weld on both of them, the drill bit tends to go to the softer material when it's in the drill press. It's not the best drill press. I don't know if a better one would make it that, that less of a problem. I know if I had a milling machine, it wouldn't be a problem, but I don't. So I was able to have both these dowels in Anyways, I, these holes are a little bit reamed out because I tried to reposition them because they were off by just the tiniest bit. Um, so I did have the transmission on there with both dowels in. Um, and the input shaft was engaged with the pilot bearing and the pilot bearing wasn't spinning, which is what I want. I know it was close and it was really close and it would probably be just fine when it was spinning, but if I JB weld these into these holes, right, so my phone died in the middle of that clip, um, so I went out to my truck to charge it, my van to charge it, and I'm going to try and get these, get this done before my phone dies again. A little bit of aluminum in there, I don't think it's gonna hurt it. But this one wasn't really an issue. This other one wasn't going in because there was like some air in there. Because that's the only thing that would push it back up like that. stuck to the, the plate. I won't be surprised if we get a little bit of stickage, but the more we reduce that, the better. I'm going to get this guy lined up with the line here. I'm going to look in there and spin the input shaft. And it's not quite lined up yet, so I've got to 
Move it around until it is. Alright, so I got it. So I won't spin the... So yeah, both dials are in. I got JB weld on them. The pilot bearing's not spinning. So I'm going to clamp it down and leave it. So the LS dowels are good. These dowels after the JB weld sets in theory should be good. And then once all four dowels are good, then I can just easily drill and tap the mounting hole for the super trans and then just through holes for the LS bolts which would be way more easy, way easier than this here. Let's check it again after I clamped it. Still good. You can zoom me in if you want. Let's see if that bushing isn't spinning. So these are good, nice and tight on both clamps. That's not spinning, so we are good to leave this. And it's nice and flat all the way along, pretty much. And it might be hard for you to tell, but sorry, I was just, just looking at it, but that's lined up pretty good too. So I'm happy with that. Not sure how long this episode's gonna end up being, but it was filmed over two different days, so I'll try and keep it short because I know the last two videos have been pretty lame. Um, but I think I have some good content for this episode, better than the last two at least. I do need to get myself a tripod because using the engine stand or the engine hoist as a tripod sucks. That's why I'm on the ground right now. I can't get a better angle because it's so large and it's up against the wall right now. But I'm happy if this JB weld, there's too much JB weld in this build already, but what are you going to do? Uh, if this, if this works out, if those dowels stay nice and true with the JB weld where they are, and I should have just did it this way from the, the beginning, then I wouldn't have had to deal with those halfway filled holes with the last round of JB weld. Because once I had it on the LS, I should have just put this on, centered it like I did, and drilled those holes. Because that's way more reliable than somebody's drawings online. Which, they were close. I may have screwed them up, but I did triple check my measurements. I'm confident I got them right. But that's besides the point. It's cool to see them. They're not bolted together yet, but it's cool to see them together. This is what it's going to look like. Um, near the end, obviously, this plate's going to get trimmed down a lot. But, uh, I'm excited moving forward. I'm happy with how that bushing worked out in the pilot bearing. And yeah, sorry I got so many episodes on this plate, but it's arguably the most important part of the whole build. So I probably should have got it down by machine shop, but. I'm stuttering and stupid, so. <laughs> Thanks for watching, though, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next part.